network connection, Windows 7 Enterprise Operating System DVD, a license key, and of course, internet access. Before you begin, you want to be sure that your system meets the requirements outlined by Microsoft in the following chart. Then you're going to want to check your system hardware. Here is a sample checklist that we've included to help you take an inventory of the hardware that you're installing Windows 7 on. When taking inventory, it may be necessary to remove the computer cover and look inside to identify the components. You may also have to use product numbers to help you identify them. Search the manufacturer's website for more detailed information. To begin installation, boot up your computer and press the button to bring up the boot menu. This is quite often F12. Insert the Windows 7 Enterprise Operating System DVD, select boot from CD drive, and press any key to begin the Windows installation. When the installation menu opens, we are presented with some language options. We selected the language to be English, the time and currency format to be uh, English Canada, and the keyboard format to be US, the standard keyboard format. Uh, then after that you'll be presented with another menu with the big button saying install now. Uh, you can click it and it proceeds to the licensing terms. Read through it and click agree to continue on with the installation. After that click on custom or advanced button to bring up the partition menu and we want to click on the drive that's there and click on drive options or advanced. And once into the, part the partitions of that drive, we want to delete any partitions that are there. And once it's completely uh, void of partitions, then we will click on New to create a new partition. And use the default amount and click Apply to make it as large as possible. It will give you a message saying that Windows needs a specific partition. Click OK to continue. At this point, press, click on the larger partition on the drive and click on Format to prepare it for installation and then click Next in order to start the Windows installation. Windows will proceed automatically through its installation tasks and afterwards you'll be required to press Restart Now or wait 10 seconds and it will restart by itself. Windows will resume the installation on Reboot and then prepare your computer for first use. One of your first tasks that you'll need to do is to enter in a username and type in the name of the computer. After you click Next, you'll be prompted to enter a password. You'll have to enter that twice, and then enter a password hint if you so choose, and then press Next one more time. Uh, you'll be given the option to protect your computer and to update Windows automatically. We chose to use recommended settings, which automatically does that. Uh, the next screen, you set your time. Here we're on mountain time, so we set that and double-checked our clock settings to make sure they were good. And then we were prompted to choose what type of Windows network we had, and we chose Work Network. Uh, it then configured our settings, prepared our desktop, and launched into Windows 7 Enterprise. The first task of setting up Windows 7 will be to fix all the driver issues. In order to figure out which ones we have, click on the Start menu, right-click on Computer, and then choose Properties from the drop-down menu. We'll bring up another screen on the top left hand side you can click on device manager uh, where you can see all the drivers that are missing by the yellow box with the exclamation mark on the drivers uh, we went to the manufacturer site and downloaded and installed the ones that were compatible with windows 7 and once we were finished the screen looked like this without any drivers or without any devices that had exclamation marks on them Next, we'll install the Windows updates by clicking on the Start menu and clicking on the Control Panel in there. Then you can click on System and Security tab uh, and then click on Check for Updates found under the Windows Updates uh, section of the page. Uh, you'll be then be prompted with a number of updates and there'll be a button that says Install Updates. Uh, click on that, you'll probably see a number of prompts. Uh, accept them all uh, as they show up. Uh, your computer might need to be restarted in the meanwhile. Uh, we'll continue to restart and rerun the update process until there are no more important updates to install. Next, we'll activate our copy of Windows by clicking on the Start menu, right-clicking on Computer, and selecting Properties from the drop-down menu. If you scroll to the bottom of that page, there's a, a link that says Change Product Key. Click on that and enter your product key that 
came either with your machine or with the disk that you purchased and click next. You'll need to connect to the internet to, to activate Windows uh, and you can tell that you've done it correctly as it will give you a activation with successful screen if it's correct. If not, you have to click back and double check your activation code for Windows. To make the workstations more useful, we would like to now join them to the domain. To do this, click on the start menu, right click on computer, and choose properties from the drop down menu. Partway down the screen you'll see a link that says change settings, click on that, and then click on the button that says change. You'll be then prompted to change the domain, so you click on the radio button beside that, and enter your domain, ours is network 5769.local, and when you press OK you'll be prompted for credentials, you'll need to use a network administrator password, username and password in order to be able to join a domain. Uh, once you've entered that, you can press OK, and you'll be prompted to restart your computer to apply changes. Uh, keep pressing OK and close, and then restart now to restart your computer. Thank you for watching our tutorial. 